A few months ago, I decided to learn the Rust programming language and make a game. This is how it went. It's just not good for game dev. Like, programming in Rust is not good for game dev. It's too safe. 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 That's it. It's too fing safe. There's too much restriction on how you should write a program. So how did we get to this point? Let's start from the beginning. My first thought was to make a game engine, pretty smart for a first project. It didn't work, so I went on Google and after a bit of searching I chose Bevy and immediately began thinking of game ideas. I wanted to make something unexpected, something original, so I combined two genres, automation and roguelike. These two genres seem very different, so let me explain my idea. You fight enemies. You build machines. Machines give items. Sell items to shopkeepers. It seemed promising, so I began working. And this was the result. I chose to draw everything in a cartoony style and it was really fun. Spoiler, it wasn't. I switched to pixel art. Also, I started using a 46 color palette called Apollo. And just look at the difference it made. Before, after. Before, after. Anyway, as you can see, we have a player, an interactable tile map, and yeah, that's kind of it. Then I jumped straight into the automation mechanic and made a few kinds of machines. The miner. The miner mines ores and outputs them to the conveyor. Well, that's kind of self explanatory. And the constructor. This guy can take in items and convert them to other items. I had a lot of issues while making the building system. At first, you had to sort of draw a path, but after playing Mindustry, Mindustry, which is also an automation game, I changed it to this. Also, due to a lack of experience in Rust and Bevy, the code was becoming an absolute spaghetti mess. When I look back at the commit history, nothing works. Constructors done, some refactorings too. Merge branch. It's working, but it's f terrible. So it's still f terrible. Well done, well done. But after that, the automation part of the game was basically done. At that time, I also made an item map. It basically displays how items will be converted into other items. So far, it was going well. I was starting to fully understand how Bevy works. You might ask me, why not use Unity or Godot? Anyway, let's get back to work. We have the automation mechanic almost finished with just a single thing missing. This thing. It's called a merger, which is a terrible name, and it can redirect items, split one path into multiple ones, or merge paths into one. It's great. During testing, I found a little bug. Basically, if you place a conveyor, then a merger, then a conveyor, and so on, you can make the items literally teleport which is super satisfying. Honestly though, it's pretty game-breaking, so let me know if I should keep it or get rid of this bug slash feature. And with that, we're done with automation. But there's a problem, there's no point in producing items. So I added this, a shop. Technically it's not a shop, it's the opposite of a shop because you're selling stuff, but anyways, we got a standstall looking thing and this dude, who blinks a lot. And on the left, we have this thing. I call it the feeder, which is again a really bad name, and it eats your items. When you supply the requested items, the dude gives you something. And I spent a long time thinking about what the dude could give you, and the first thing that came to mind was potions. I thought it would be very interesting to have many potions, 
instead of many weapons. Definitely not, because potions are easier to implement. So, it was time to make some potions. Well, that was quick. On the right, we have a little potion panel. I created 8 potions with different stats. My favorite one is the Flea Potion. It gives a slight speed boost. I also added this console thing. You can easily give some potions to yourself. Now comes the hard part, enemies. In my last devlog, I asked you to design some enemies for the game. All of them are amazing, but for the first enemy, I chose this little guy, Molar, or as I call it, the Mole. I spent a bit of time recoloring and redesigning it a bit to make it smaller, and we have a mold. It was time to tackle my biggest fear, enemy AI. My previous game Caver didn't have any pathfinding. The enemies were absolute dumbasses. I really wanted to make the enemies smart in my game, and oh well, I created an absolute mega mind. Little example here, I'm currently standing right here, the enemy can't see me because there is no path to me. But when I remove this tile, the algorithms kick in and it starts solving a literal maze. How cool is that? It also has different states, when it can't see me it tries to pathfind to me using the A star algorithm. But when he has direct sightline, it just follows me in a straight path. This isn't anything new, but I was really proud of what I had made. Then I added health, a sword, and the ability for the enemies to damage you. It was time for a battle. Place your bets. 200 moles versus me. I just do that? Doesn't that work? Oh, it doesn't. I think I've killed like, I don't know, 40? Oh, there's one guy. Oh, no! Okay. This is bad. Oh. Well, we're dead. <laughs> We have automation, we have potions, we have enemies. So how do we connect all of these things? I thought a lot about this and I'm still not sure if it's going to work. But anyway, this is my plan. Automation connects to shop. Shop gives you potions and kernel coins, don't worry about the kernel coins. Potions improve the player state, which lets you kill more enemies. Enemies drop gear coins, and from gear coins you build stuff. I've planned 7 levels for the game. Stone caverns, mushroom caves, sandstone dunes, ice tunnels, mossy dungeons, lava lakes, and the final boss level, the Intel Castle. As you can see, I've just created the color palettes for the levels. So what's my plan? My plan is to make a demo. We just run around, slay some monsters, and automate stuff. Then make a full game and publish it on Steam. Sounds a bit crazy, but I really hope I won't quit this game. But honestly, I wouldn't be that mad because this has been such a great learning experience. I've learned a lot about Rust, Bevy, procedural programming. It's great. Alright, so to finish off this devlog, I added sound effects. and also a placeholder main menu. I made it look as placeholdery as possible to actually force myself to update it as soon as possible. Cause let's be honest, if a placeholder looks half decent, it's probably gonna stay. So yeah, that's it. Until the next devlog, expect to get a demo, and to not miss it, join my discord, link in the description. 
Also, just a clarification, you can still post the enemies in the Your Enemies channel. I wanted to thank all of you who actually took time to draw the enemies. Some of them are absolutely amazing. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this devlog. Subscribe, follow me on Twitch, I might stream one day. And see you later. I would rather take a gun and shoot myself in the f game development and the rest. Let's try to think like what would be more painful, me shooting my own dick off or just like dead, right? And I think shooting my dick off would be more painful because then you'd have to live without a dick. So I would say I'd rather shoot my own dick off than do game development and the rest.